Welcome back to the free CAD Made Easy series. In part one, we kick things off in the start workbench. You can catch that episode in the playlist link above. Now it's time to dive into the Sketcher workbench, where simple lines and circles grow into full 3D models. Sketcher handles a drawing, and part design turns those sketches into solid objects. A duo as natural as peanut butter and jelly. Today, we'll keep it simple. Sketch, constrain, and pop it into 3D with the pad tool. Let's fire up FreeCAD and get started. And if this is your kind of nerdy fun, tap like and subscribe to keep the good stuff coming. So how does FreeCAD bring precise, editable models to life? Buckle up! The part design and sketcher workbenches are your trusty sidekicks in the world of parametric modeling. Sketcher is where everything begins. You drop in raw geometry, lines, rectangles, circles, arcs, the starting pieces of your design. Think of them as rough puzzle pieces scattered on the table, waiting to be snapped into place. At first, these shapes are free and flexible, drifting around without fixed size or position. Constraints swoop in to bring order. They're the rules that tame the chaos, pinning points to the origin, forcing lines to stay parallel, locking dimensions into place. A circle can be locked at the center, a rectangle squared up, or an edge stretched to a precise length. Suddenly, your sketch goes from wild scribbles to a disciplined blueprint. Once the sketch is behaving, part design steps up and builds it into a 3D model. Step by step, features stack into a history-based, fully editable design. The best part? Your model comes with its own time machine. Change something early in the history, and every feature updates automatically to keep the whole design consistent. Now, when it comes to creating a parametric part, there are two ways to go about it. The first option is the traditional route. Use File New to create an empty model. Then jump into the Part Design Workbench and create a body. It's like setting the stage for your masterpiece. But if you're looking for a quicker start, simply click Create New Parametric Part in the Start Workbench, and voila, you're automatically dropped into part design with a body already waiting for you. And here's the key. A body is essential in part design. It's the foundation of everything, acting as the container for all your features as your design takes shape. With the body in place, the next step is to drop in a sketch, the launch pad for all parametric models. Think of the body as the stage, and the sketch as the script that kicks the whole story into motion. It's the first real step on your journey, usually the very first feature added inside a body, that reliable container that keeps all your modeling magic organized. To spin up a sketch, just hit the Create Sketch icon in the Part Design toolbar or the Create Sketch link in the task panel. One click and you're sketching away, turning ideas into digital lines on the screen. The first step in creating a sketch is choosing where it will live in 3D space. This can be done by selecting a face on the model or by using the plane view to pick from the standard reference options. Since this is our very first sketch, we'll stick with one of the base references. FreeCAD gives you three orientations to choose from, XY, XZ, and YZ. These define the direction from which your sketch is viewed and drawn. The same way a video game lets you pick your camera angle before the action begins. XY is the go-to for top-down designs, where the model is viewed from above. XZ puts you front and center, ideal for profiles. YZ shifts you to the side, perfect for silhouettes. Each option offers a unique angle to bring your design to life. Now that Sketcher is open, let's pause before drawing and take a quick look at the ribbon. As with other workbenches, Sketcher organizes its tools along a ribbon at the top, keeping everything you need within easy reach. It breaks down into two main camps, geometry for creating shapes and constraints for keeping them under control. Geometry is packed with lines, arcs, and polygons, all neatly lined up in the top toolbar, ready to help you shape your component. Choosing the right one depends on the profile you want, the same way a builder grabs the right drill bit or wrench for the job. 
The fun comes when everything clicks into place. To the right, constraints are easy to spot by their bright red icons. They keep sketches consistent and parametric by locking down size, shape, and position, so nothing shifts unexpectedly. Think of them as Sketcher's measuring tape and Carpenter's square, the tools that keep everything straight, centered, and true. By defining relationships, keeping a line horizontal or anchoring a circle at the origin, they make your model stable, predictable, and easy to edit as it evolves. Starting in FreeCAD version 1.0, the sizing constraint tools have been simplified. Instead of separate tools for horizontal, vertical, and general distances, a single tool is now used to apply distance constraints. In most cases, FreeCAD automatically determines the appropriate type, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, based on the selected geometry. If the result is not as expected, the drop-down arrow beside the tool can be used to manually select the desired constraint type. Now that we have become familiar with the ribbon, it's time to put it to work. We'll start with a square and place a circle inside it, a simple sketch that lays the foundation for everything to come. Grab the rectangle tool from the geometry side of the ribbon. Click once to set the first corner, then click again to mark the opposite corner. A square now frames your sketch plane. Next, pick the circle tool. Click once at the origin to set its center. Then drag outward and click again to lock in the radius. The circle is now anchored neatly in the middle of the square. At this stage, the shapes are still free to move and resize, much like pencil lines on graph paper before you bring in a carpenter square. Constraints will come next to lock them down and give the sketch precision. To turn these rough shapes into a precise sketch, we need constraints. In Sketcher, they're the rules of the road for your design, applied either by clicking the tool and then selecting the geometry, or by selecting the geometry first and then clicking the tool. When several elements are involved, starting with the tool often works best, especially for symmetry or tangent, where order matters. This keeps the process clear and avoids mistakes. With a mix of geometric and dimensional rules, the sketch becomes fully defined and ambiguity is removed. If a sketch is under constrained, parts may drift when edited, leading to unstable results. The interface helps by using colors, white for under, green for fully, and red for over constraint. It's a traffic light for your design. Green means you're good to go, red means stop and fix something, and white means there's still work to do. These indicators can be customized. In Preferences, under Sketcher, Appearance, you can set your own scheme for under, fully, and over constrained elements. The effect is the same as labeling your tool drawers. Everything still works the same, but it feels smoother when organized your way. As constraints are applied and degrees of freedom are reduced, the solver panel updates its messages to show how close the sketch is to being fully defined. You can always check its feedback in the task panel to see what remains to be locked down. It works as a coach on the sidelines, tracking the score while you focus on the play. Let's walk through making a perfect square using constraints. Start by applying a horizontal dimension to one side of the rectangle. Then select a vertical side and apply an equal constraint to the horizontal one. This makes both sides the same size, forming a square with equal height and width. It does not matter whether the line or the constraint tool is selected first. Either order will work. At this point, the square's dimensions are defined, but its position is still floating. To center it on the origin, apply the symmetry constraint. This tool can be used either with two points and a reference line or with three points. When using three points, selection order matters. The top corner should be selected first, then the bottom corner, and finally the origin. If the origin is not selected last, FreeCAD may misinterpret the intent 
potentially mirroring the wrong points or producing an error. When applied correctly, the square becomes anchored symmetrically around the sketch origin. While the square is fully constrained, the sketch as a whole is not yet complete. The solver indicates one remaining degree of freedom. This comes from the circle, which still needs a defined size. Use the dimension tool to set its diameter and fully constrain the sketch. With the sketch now fully constrained, it's time to move into 3D modeling. This begins by closing the sketcher using the close button in the task panel. Then switchy to the part design workbench to apply the pad tool and turn the sketch into a feature. Even when a sketch is fully constrained, it must form a single closed shape to create a valid solid in part design. If the sketch contains multiple disjoint profiles, open loops, or overlapping geometry, FreeCAD will display an error when attempting to pad or extrude it. Padding a sketch generates a 3D solid by extruding the closed profile perpendicular to the sketch plane. The depth can be defined by entering a specific value in the task panel, resulting in a straight linear extrusion. The sketch is transformed into a solid object. Rotate the view to see its new depth and volume. And that wraps up this stage of the journey. We started with a simple sketch, locked it down with constraints, and pushed it into 3D with the pad tool. A solid first step into parametric modeling. In the next installment, we'll build on this solid block by sketching directly on a face. That opens the door to the pocket tool, carving holes, slots, and other shapes straight into the model. Pad builds it up, pocket cuts it down, and together they unlock a whole new level of control. We'll also dive deeper into the Sketcher workbench, uncovering more tools, more constraint tricks, and more ways to keep geometry flexible yet precise. This is where sketches stop being basic outlines and start becoming powerful blueprints for complex designs. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe so you don't miss the next installment. There's plenty more FreeCAD fun on the way.